all your questions and uh, direction for getting this process uh, perfectly like plan for your kids to go to the right uh, schools uh, so uh, we thank uh, bromi uh, and the team for uh, joining us in this uh, important uh, like you know, webinar uh, and i would like to introduce uh, our uh, thana president anjay choudhury garu uh, and also i would like to like you know uh, thank uh, and welcome all the executive committee members of thana i don't see all the names but uh, whoever uh, joined from tana executive committee i would like to welcome them wholeheartedly and uh, uh, before i ask uh, tana president anjay choudhury garu to uh, uh, address the gathering i would also like to uh, thank uh, our community service coordinator uh, raja kasukutti garu uh, in uh, helping in bringing this great program to the tana community uh, also i think naga is also another uh, regional coordinator so uh, by the way myself uh, my name is ram tota i am regional representative from uh, northern california tana uh, so we have uh, naga panchamurthy garu who is also part of our team in arranging this uh, great webinar so i would like to thank him also and with that said uh, i would like to request anjay choudhury garu the tana president to address the gathering and speak few words on this program anjay garu yeah. thank you ram can you hear me ram yeah we are All right uh, good evening everybody so welcome uh, to college preparedness or getting ready for the upcoming uh, you know uh, admissions and all the orientation that, that is needed for the kids for especially for middle school and high school first i would like to recognize upachi kotapalli garu kelly brett and blair bets for taking the initiative and being with me want to recognize gomi as well in association with uh, you know tana the collaboration is will be cherished definitely because you are part of uh, you know uh, initiative tana is bringing to the forefront of people especially the new community of course indian community in general in our mission statement and especially in our tana logo we have our youth our youth are our heritage you know aligning to that particular uh, you know mission and statement uh, we have done many programs to cater to the next generation and to name a few we have completed a very successful sat ac act coaching classes we have done a public speaking contest we have done math enrichment program for the kids so likewise we have done chess for the next generation and this particular event also cater to the same section of the next generation so we i think we lost yeah he lost it i think uh, maybe he got to join again yeah yeah so i think while we wait for anjay garu to rejoin i would like to uh, actually there is a great team from gromi uh, today uh, eminent speakers are going to present you so i will name them and then i will uh, ask uh, our community service coordinator uh, rajakas kutti garu to give a brief introduction of the team we have uppal uh, kotapalli garu the founder of gromi and also kelly brit and blair bets the co-founders of gromi uh, uh, i will uh, ask uh, raja garu to introduce them to the gathering thank you okay yeah thank you uh, thank you uh, ram tota and uh, i also would like to thank one more uh, couple of more people here uh, from tana leadership um, one of the uh, person is uh, uh, srinivas vorganti he is the foundation trustee he is the one who introduced uh, gromi uh, to community services um, uh, wing of tana so thank you vorganti srinivas garu uh, for bringing gromi and upaji garu and team Uh, to the tana platform and once again um, without our uh, uh, um, uh, coordination like the leadership as well as all our regional coordinators and everybody right and i would like to specially thank mr ram tota and also naga panchmurthy i think he is also he also joined the call um, um, yeah, i guess so i thank all three of you naga ram tota as well as vorgant garu for bringing and coordinating all these things uh, to help um the student community as well as the parents of the students here in uh, um, north america 
um i would like to introduce upaji kotpal garu he is the founder of uh, gromi um, organization who are helping the students and the parents uh, to uh, get prepared for the um, uh, college uh, for their kids um, uh, as well as i would like to introduce uh, kelly brit and she is the co-founder of gromi as well as she is the uh, um, uh, experienced um uh, exp she has very good experience working as a college admission con um, uh, counselor and also um, uh, Bla um blair brits uh, she is also co-founder of um uh, gromi as well as she is also worked as a um, uh, she also worked as a uh, college educational counselor earlier and they have a very great team uh, to present today um, i really thank the entire gromi team upaji garu kelly and blair to join on Tana platform uh, to share their in thoughts and inputs uh, to help the community here, as well as Gromi as an organization who is uh, really helping um, um, their 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 um, business uh, uh, their organizational businesses uh, to help the students as well as the parents to get ready for the college education. So today they are here to present themselves. Let me see if Anjay Garu is here. If he, he can. Um, say uh, he can continue um, his um, words here. Anjigar, are you hearing me? Yeah, uh, Raja, you, yeah. you couldn't hear me from the first minute or? Yeah, first minute was fine. You just uh, you just started, but you can you can restart and then we oh. can, um, oh. yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, if, if there's any technical issue, just, uh, you know, text me. So once again, uh, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, sorry for the loss of probably my part, I guess. So let me recognize, uh, uh, quickly, Upaji Kathapalgaru, Kelly Brett, and Blair Betts, of course, uh, Grow Me, so the collaboration uh, Tana. This is just to bring to you and cater to the next generation kids. We have an our mission statement as well as an our Tana on heritage. So, in aligning to that particular, uh, we need to make some deeds that cater to the next generation. We have done SAT, ACT coaching. We have done uh, public speaking contest. We also finished a math enrichment uh, program for the kids. So this particular ready college readiness and you know preparation for for your uh, future definitely is part of that initiative. So let me reiterate that uh, this particular theme is very big on uh, initiative to cater to the next generation. So I need to recognize uh, Raja Kasputi, our community service coordinator, Srinivas Urugandi, who is part of the initiating this program, and of course the host Ram Tota and uh, Naga Panchmati, uh, entire Tana leadership without their unconditional support, we won't be here. So. Whatever we do, uh, whatever great, but without the participation, we won't be successful. So let me thank, from the bottom of my heart, all the parents and the kids who are trying to take advantage of this uh, noble session and a good initiative. We have 200 plus participants, which shows we have a very good turnout. So without delaying, let me hand it back to Raja and you all have a good night. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Anjay Garu. Uh, Ram, I guess Ra Naga is also Naga. Uh, I know, like you might be traveling or you might be outside. I know, like you you were traveling yesterday and day before yesterday. So you, if you, um, if you are comfortable or if you can uh, say a few words, um, uh, say a few words. Uh, otherwise, we can move on. Naga, are you there? Uh, I am good, Raja. Sorry. Uh, go ahead, Liam. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I know, like you you will be you might be outside. So th thank you, Naga. Yeah. Are too much noisy and yeah 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 thank you yeah ram Dota, please continue yeah i think uh, uh, we will go ahead with the presentation i'm going to mute uh, everyone uh, so that the presentation goes ahead and then at the end of the presentation we'll take the questions uh, so please uh, post your questions in the chat room and also if you have any questions that you want to directly ask you can raise your hand so we'll go ahead uh, uh, in the order that uh, the people are interested in the questions. So with that, uh, I would like to request uh, uh, the Gromi team to start the presentation. Thank you. Pajigar, you are on mute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Uh, first of all, big thanks to the Tana team for welcoming us, for, for recognizing us. Um, and as, as Anjay Garu mentioned, yes, this is in line with, uh, with uh, helping the next generation of the, of the students. Um, so we are on a great mission and I'm going to talk about it uh, in a minute. Um, so we, we started this uh, 
Gromi organization to uh, with two core objectives: make the college education more streamlined and simplified, uh, and and make it more accessible and affordable to the students. That is our our overall game. Um, and we all know uh, that uh, college education and preparation for college is is very cumbersome. It is it is uh, it involves a lot of data points. It needs a lot of information, a lot of preparation, guidance, and and coordination. And it is not it is not that easy for the students because they have to do this in addition to their college regular college regular schoolwork, regular projects. Uh, and and SAT preparation and whatnot, right? So there is a there is a there is a definite need of of counseling for each and every student um, um, in the U.S. who is aspiring to get into the college education. We Upajigar, you are on mute again. I didn't do anything. I mean, okay. um, is it fine? Okay. Yeah. So, um, um, so we started this organization a couple of years ago, and uh, we are very blessed to have two of the topmost successful and dynamic college counselors and admission officers joining us, Calib Calibrate and Blade Bets. And uh, with them, um, and along with other counselors that we have, um, we have a full pledge team. Um, that that is going to cater the services to all the students right from ninth grade or even in the, from middle school onwards, and we have shown tremendous results in the last two years. I mean, um, on an average, all our students are getting minimum five or six admissions um, into into the top colleges of their choice. So uh, we are we are uh, on a mission, as I mentioned, and I would like to get into our presentation. To give more details um, and, and and understand what we are what we are aspiring and what we are led by and what we are going to offer to the students. So, uh, Ram Garu, if you can confirm when you when you start seeing my screen. Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay, fantastic. All right. So, Gromi, um, Gromi is a college readiness platform. Um, it is it is um, a consulting service um, with 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 a lot of technology enablement and technology innovation embedded into the process. That's why we call it as 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 a platform. And the name Gromi um, indicates our, our our objective and our goal. Uh, this is a platform which allows the student to grow, which allows the student to evolve, which evolve, uh, allows the student to, to prepare uh, um, towards their college uh, admission process. So this should be, uh, in the big picture, this will be a self-sufficient, self-reliant, mobile app-driven platform um, that, will, that will make the students um, self-reliant by themselves through technology. So, the fundamental objective of Gromi is to address the current problem in the in the existing process. The current process has uh, some key issues like the counselor to student ratio in the public schools and even in private schools to some extent is very 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 high. The uh, the government standard recommendation is 250 students is to one counselor, but uh, on an average, it is more than double. It is more than 500 students um, per each counselor. And and guess what? These college counselors are the least recognized and respected uh, um, resources in, 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 in the school districts. Unfortunately, during the COVID time, the maximum number of layoffs happened in the school districts or the college counselors. So effectively, the college counseling that the students are getting in the public schools is, is very, very, very uh, less than what is needed. And as we already discussed, the, the navigation through the college preparation process is very cumbersome, is very, very, very confusing um, in, in, in most of the cases. And the counseling services that are available outside uh, are mostly are very, very, very expensive. As per the, as per the uh, statistics that we have, only two to three percent of the, of the counseling services 
uh, only two to two percent of the parents can afford these counseling services. And and from a, I can talk from a Bay Area perspective. I mean, these counseling services are ranging from anywhere from ten thousand dollars all the way to twenty five, even thirty thousand dollars in some students. And the other big factor that is that is that is making the situation even even worse is the competition. The number of seats in the colleges is not growing. The number of students applying to the student to the college is is constantly growing, and and even the the students from international um, uh, diaspora like like students from India, students from China, students from all other countries are increasingly coming to the U.S. for the undergrad itself. So the students in the U.S. are competing with international students and 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 struggling with the with the lack of facilities available here. The parents uh, of the students. Either they don't have complete knowledge, or or they don't have enough time to help their kids, especially students, um, parents of Indian uh, or Asian origin. Most of them are not familiar with the education process here and how the preparation should happen here, and what point points to consider at what time, and all those details are not are not known to those parents. So Gromi is going to address all these problems, right? So as I mentioned, we are in the process of revolutionizing this whole process, digitally transforming it, and and make it much much simpler and easier for the students and the parents. While we are working on our mission, I mean, we would like to uh, start talking about some key points in the process. I mean, what what you should consider, what what you should what you should immediately address, right? And so we are going to walk through the next couple of slides for the next 25 to 30 minutes, and and then we'll open up for Q and A. So we request you you to please um, uh, take down your questions and be ready with your questions towards the end of our presentation. All right. So the first topic is college preparation planning. Um, so I would like Blair uh, to start uh, with with her comments on this topic. Yes, of course. Um, thanks, Upaji, and good evening, everyone in the Tana community, and thanks for joining us. Um, so just going to get started straight away, but. I would say that um, just in terms of when to start preparing for college, as with everything, the earlier the better. Um, and I recommend with starting with goal setting. So help your child um, with establishing goals, goals early on. And as you know, this is gonna help them with their motivation, prioritization, um, accountability, and their morale, of course, which is really important. So just helping your student with achieving the, girls, the goals early on is gonna be crucial um, to the college planning process later on down the road. So with that, it's gonna come um, helping your child with their study habits. And if your child is in middle school right now and you recognize that they might have poor study habits at this point, now is really when you should try to nip that in the bud um, so that they don't carry those habits on into high school. Um, so there's lots of time management tools that you can get online, um, you know, but what's really important to establish right now is that doing homework is separate from studying, right? Um, so just really kind of establishing that kind of work ethic is going to be really important and help them with getting more into those selective colleges and then also just being selective or being successful once they get there rather. Um, and of course, this is going to lead to their academic trajectory. Again, like I said earlier, with anything in life, planning and preparation is key, um, especially when it comes to the college application process. And we always say just in terms of the student's curriculum that the transcript is going to tell a story. So, you know, as parents and as guardians of, of your students, um, you want to help your student map out what their academic story is going to be. And, you know, if students um, are able to plan for all four years of high school, that's perfect. Again, the earlier the better, can't stress that enough. Um, but they're going to need to revisit that plan each year, make any adjustments, you know, quarterly, just kind of along the way. But um, I always kind of recommend starting backwards and going from senior year so that students are aware of any prerequisites that they're going to need for starting courses. Um, and Apaji is going to talk about this a little bit later, but, you know, if your student is really focused on a specific career or field, um, they're really going to need to strive to exhaust the curriculum and the appropriate courses um, if possible. So the example that I always like to give is with engineering, right? Definitely competitive competitive skills. Um, so for engineering students, for instance, they want to aim to take the highest level possible in their math as well as their science courses, because the highly selective colleges and universities, they're going to have that expectation. Um, so for instance, if your child's school offers 
Physics C, if they offer a linear algebra, um, those courses should be part of your four-year academic plan. So you want to have those senior year if possible. So again, starting backwards and working forward is going to be really um, beneficial. So for some students, in order to be more competitive in the process, they're going to need, maybe need to take classes at their local community college during the school year or um, in the summertime to kind of get ahead. And if they've exhausted their, um, their school's curriculum by senior year, that's definitely going to be really important. Um, now, as you know, some schools are going to have like dual enrollment programs with local colleges. So that's great if you know, your student has access to that. Um, and then if your student is um, a student at an independent school, there's something called the Global Online Academy. So if your, your student's school is part of that consortium, they can take classes through GOA as well. It's a really great program for students. Um, but even though it might, you know, kind of be far down the line, I also suggest looking at these requirements for specific colleges. So colleges are going to want to see um, that students have a well-balanced curriculum in general. Um, and that's going to typically line, align with the school's um, graduation requirements. But some students, or some colleges rather, are going to specify that they want perhaps a certain number of years for language or, you know, things of that different subjects. So again, just planning ahead, taking those things into consideration. And especially if you have an idea of the schools that your student wants to apply to, it definitely can't hurt to look at those requirements in advance. I um, mean, even if your student doesn't know, it's still kind of worth having this conversation so that they understand what is gonna be expected of them to get into these competitive schools. Um, and then the more selective colleges and universities, they're really gonna to wanna to see that students um, demonstrate rigor in their curriculum by taking AP courses or IB courses, whatever the schools offer. And um, you wanna to try to have those in all of the five core subjects if that's possible. So um, yeah, as you know, with extracurriculars is also a very important part of the college admissions process. So you're gonna hear a lot about extracurriculars along the way. So I mentioned earlier that just in terms of curriculum, college wanna see um, a well-balanced transcript, right? So again, those, those four subjects, they want to see rigor in them, but through extracurriculars, um, this is how students can help develop their admissions spike. So this is essentially kind of like what your students going to be defined as, kind of like their niche area. Um, so they can really do this and develop this by focusing on their passion. So, you know, obviously we're still in the midst of a pandemic, even though some of us act like we're not, but we still are, right? And you know, obviously colleges understand that um, there may have been a disruption in the pursuit of extracurriculars, but you know, last year high schools were able to move all their clubs essentially and organizations online, their activities online. Um, and then, you know, of course, students are back in the classroom this year. So there's really no excuse not to be participating. Um, so while on a personal level, you know, we've all been impacted by the um, pandemic. But you know, those of us who are able to, we really have to push forward because, you know, as Apaji said, the um, admissions process is getting increasingly competitive each year. It gets much harder, so you have to stay ahead of the game. Um, so just in terms of like extracurriculars, you know, it's a lot to get into, but colleges are going to be most interested in the extracurriculars that um, you know students can give back to society with, that they can build um, particular skills. And that also allows them to explore their, their interests. So students can seek out different volunteer opportunities in areas like hunger, um, advocacy, or human rights. And there's also you know, a ton of tutoring opportunities. And these are, again, available in person as well as online now. So everyone can get involved. Um, so as a freshman, you know, we typically encourage students to just get involved in as many clubs and organizations and activities as, you know, as possible, um, to see what they like, see what they don't like, but then they really want to start to narrow down their extracurriculars by preferably sophomore year. And this is again, how they're gonna help build, that, build their, um, their application spike or their admission spike rather. So this spike is gonna be um, what's part of their application and their application story. So it's going to be woven into their essays, their interviews with, you know, with the reps, college reps. Um, it's going to be woven into their letters of recommendation. So they're really going to want to capitalize on one or two areas of interest um, to develop that spike. And these, of course, these interests can intersect. Um, so, you know, in order to build that spike, like apart from taking classes in school, 
um, you know, a lot of the selective colleges, they're really going to want to see that students continue to demonstrate um, their interest in their intellectual pursuits. So I always recommend like Coursera, I recommend edX, those are really great platforms um, where students can take courses from different universities and colleges um, from across the world. They can do language classes, social sciences, humanities, um, computer science, data science, there's really a lot there. So definitely check those websites out. Um, but then they can also earn certificates at their own pace. So again, just something to give them an edge, something to build that admission spike, um, and just you know make them stand out in the applicant pool. Um, but you know, really at the end of the day, what's going to be really important is that students just continue to engage in school um, and, and engage in their areas of interest. So you know, obviously, COVID certainly um, limited activities, but students also got really creative at this time, right? So you know, a lot of things are are open um, are open for in person and available online. Um, one really great um, platform I recommend is Skillshare. So that's a great one because you know students can do things like animation, um, illustration, even cooking classes, interior design. So really, the students can get exposed to things that they never even would have dreamed of before the pandemic. Um, so they should really capitalize on this. And um, just to kind of wrap this up, you know, obviously, like I said, it's hard to, it's impossible really to go into detail about extracurriculars. So that could be a whole two-hour session itself. Um, but you know that the more selective colleges, they're really going to take a holistic approach to the application review. Um, so they're going to want to know like the ways that students have grown throughout their high school, throughout their time in high school, rather. Um, so committing to extracurriculars, it's really a great way to demonstrate this because students can really show um, like their impact that they have. And also, you know, just students really want to dive deep into what they're what they're interested in and really just kind of find ways to expand on that. And that's what you know colleges are looking for. So, you know, for some students that might be within their schools, it might be their local community, but really for other students, it could be in a national level um, or even a global, global level, international level. So um, you know, again, can't stress enough that extracurriculars are really important as well as um, GPA and test scores. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much, Blair. I just want to add one 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 point there. Uh, regarding the Ivy Leagues, right? So we, 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 we place the students in all the colleges, including the Ivy Leagues. And whatever uh, Blair has just mentioned, we facilitate and we, we help the students to go through all these, all these preparation activities. Uh, and also regarding Ivy Leagues, right? Uh, what, do, what do Ivy Leagues look in a student different than, than other, other schools, right? Uh, I was talking to a, a professor from, from one of the Ivy Leagues and they, they, he just mentioned that they look at a student on what will the students do if, if we all go on on sabbatical for one year if all the all the uh, uh, teaching staff go on sabbatical so what do these students do i mean uh, are they going to just sit there or, or watch videos or play video games or, or are they going to start something on their own or um, are they go are they going to kick start something uh, i mean by them by themselves you know they want they want self achievers they want self motivators in these ivy leagues so and that kind of that kind of portfolio uh, that kind of character harnessing is is what we do the, uh, the, we extract the best out of the students and and we present that in the most effective way in, in in their essays that is that is where we specialize and that's why we are getting such good results right thank you blair all right uh, going on to the next topic uh, this is the career exploration um, i would like to take a few minutes um, um in the interest of time so the most important step, the most critical step in the college preparation is identifying your career choice. What do you want to become and why do you want to become and what motivated you? I mean, how passionate are you? How committed are you? That's what that's what is the is the key difference between a, a student who is getting into top college versus a student who is not getting into a top college. Right. So that that first step is very, very, very important task in our in our service catalog. We spend enough time with the student. We spend enough. We give enough time for the student to evolve. That's what that's why our, our platform is called as Grow Me. Right. I mean, nobody can identify their their uh, career path just like that. I mean, and they should not. Right. Um, uh, neither neither they should get influenced by by either community or, or family or, or or any other friend circle. 
um so we we allow the student to uh, to explore various options we give them assignments to explore various options and give them time to digest and fathom their own thought process and finally narrow down to one or two uh, career choices um so that is very 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 important and and there are lot of data points that should go into this into this step and one of them is is market outlook i mean at the end of the day either you will be you will be uh, targeting to become um, a, an employer or join a job path in one of the companies or you want to go into the academic path where you want to do research and become a scientist or a professor right in either way you should know what is going on in the market what is what what is the prognosis or what is the forecast for this particular technology or particular this domain in the next 5 to 10 years right uh, uh, just as an example uh, in the last 3 years the biggest the biggest uh, employer uh, the, the biggest recruiting firm in the bay area is is not computer science it is tesla tesla is hiring like thousands and thousands of students off the campus and so the mechanical electrical uh, or this convergence technology domains are are in more demand than than pure computer science or computer engineering right so you have to have a market outlook on how things are going and how things are going to evolve in the market that will play an important role in your career that should be a, a strong point for you to consider uh, in your in your career path choice you should know what kind of job you are going to end up and how many jobs are there and 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 what is a typical day of a person in that particular domain you should know all this and we facilitate that we 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 help the students in getting that we are we are not just academicians uh, uh, but we we are a, a perfect mix of both academic and the industry uh, uh, experts i mean we have we have experts um, uh, from both the industry as well as the college side so we bring in the best best mix of of both the informations based on which the students uh, should should uh, move forward in their career path choice all right with that let's go to the next slide All right i mean this is another topic which is very 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 important everybody talks about like i mean prompts or or essays or supplementals or main essays or common app essays so i would like i would request blair to just give a couple of minutes of her high level uh, input on what is the key differences between them yeah sure so um you know as everyone knows essays are a really important part of the application process um because it's a part of the application that gives the student their voice so it allows the admissions committees to hear directly from them um so it's a chance to tell their story outside of test scores outside of what's on their transcript um and the best way that the best essay for students to do this is going to be through the personal statement so for the most part um we associate the personal statement as the 600 and 50 word common application essay question um and so for those of you who aren't familiar with what the common application is um it essentially allows students to apply um up to 20 schools um or there's there's 900 plus schools that are part of the application um uh service and students can apply to 20 schools as part of that application so um the common app is going to give students seven choices um they have to write one essay prompt and there's also an optional covid-19 essay that students can write as well um so the personal statement is going to be read by all of the schools that students apply to through the common application um but it also tends to be the most difficult essay um it takes a lot of students time um because it really requires them to be self-reflective they need to include like self analysis in within that essay um and a lot of students just aren't used to writing like that right it's it's hard for adults to even be self reflective at times um so you know it's going to be used to express to admissions committees um a student's qualities characteristics and then most importantly what it is that they value um so from i'd say from brainstorming to the final revisions of the personal statement it can really take anywhere from 4 to 6 weeks on average um for the personal statement to to be complete by, completed by both students um but the good thing is a lot of the times the personal statement can be modified to fit the prompts for some of the other colleges that may not be part of the common application um and then apart from the personal statement um most selective schools um and then you know highly selective schools are also going to require supplemental essays so these are going to vary by school um but they can range from 25 to about 250 words typically and they tend to fall into four different categories 
So you'll have your Y school. Um, so this is why a student wants to attend a particular school. Um, you'll have Y major, which is self-explanatory. Um, some schools will have a community essay, and that's where students can, you know, discuss the community that they belong to that's meaningful to them and why. Um, and then others will have like an extracurricular um, essay where students can expand on one of their involvements and again, why it's meaningful to them. So these essays, um, they tend to be specific to the individual school. So I always refer to these as being um, like matchmaking essays. So where students can really tell um, the admissions committee why they're a good match for their school and really try to get them to picture them um, as a student on their, on their college campus. Um, so what students don't want to do when it comes to the personal statement and the supplemental essays is rattle off a bunch of their involvements um, because there's a space for this. So while it's not on, while it's on an essay, um, all college applications are going to have an activity section and that's gonna play an important role when students are being reviewed for admission. Um, so this section is kind of like a resume of extracurriculars, if you will. Um, so it's going to um, outline what students have been involved in throughout high school. And it's gonna show how much time and dedication that they have to, that, to these activities. And it's also gonna provide a glimpse um, to the impact that they've had within their extracurriculars. So there's usually, I know the Common App has about 10 spaces where students can list their activities. Um, so this can be you know, their clubs, this could be volunteer work, um, summer programs, regular work, like at an ice cream shop, um, could be like household responsibilities. If you, know, you have a younger sibling that you have to babysit on a regular basis while your parents are at work. Um, it could be internships, as well as like research or passion projects. Um, so there is a character limit. Um, so it's really best that students will um, like quantify their, their, their involvements within the description as much as possible. And again, you, that's how you're gonna show um, the impact that you've had within your extracurriculars. Um, and then, yeah, with supplemental essays, um, this can allow students to, ex to expand on one or two of, of their activities. Um, and in some cases, the personal statement will allow that as well. Um, but again, the personal statement is really going to, um, the main purpose of that is to tell the admissions committee something that they otherwise won't know um, from the rest of the application. So again, it gives voice. So you can provide a background story to extracurriculars, but it shouldn't be the focus of the essay. Um, so you're not gonna want to have overlap in these essays um, in order to just kind of best ensure that the admissions committee gets a full picture as possible. Um, and then also just in terms of like who you are as an individual um, and what you can contribute to your college campus, um, as well as like the global community because colleges want, um, yeah, they want their, their students to be global citizens as well. So definitely, as I'm sure you know, the essay is the most time consuming part of the application process. But I would say most students are gonna write anywhere between 10 to 20 essays um, on average as part of the process. So it's a lot of work that, that students will have ahead of them. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much, Blair. All right, let's go on to the uh, the most hot topic and the most burning question on, any, on everybody's mind. Kelly, would you like to take it from here, please? Okay, hi everyone. Um, so I know that <laughs> this is all very overwhelming and challenging and navigate, but really your recipe for success is being informed, prepared, and more than anything, actually excited about this process as a self-discovery as well, not just a lot of paperwork to get into college. So the more you can dive into that and see that, it'll definitely come across in your applications. And on that note, a little reality check. So last year we saw historic leaps in admissions data in terms of across the board, applications in most cases doubled, if not beyond that. Um, and I did a little breakdown here just to give you two examples. But on that, though applications are on the rise, placements are not. So you can do the math yourself to see what that means. Um, two good examples here on the U UC system where overall all campuses combined, they went up by 13% and the admissions acceptance was down by a minimum of 4%. And then on the higher ranked Ivy League side of things, um, Columbia became the most selective of all the Ivy Leagues with 51% increase in applications. 
again, that goes without saying what that means in terms of what the process looks like. Um, and then acceptance down by 2.3%. So what does that mean in terms of your next steps of kind of navigating an already challenging process? Um, one new thing that came in within this is sort of these trends, but also ways that you can strategically prepare for this is the test optional strategy. So in general, you'll hear Blair and I say for the overall application process, when it says optional, it means do it anyway, because it's a chance for you to really highlight your strengths, um, provide more context to sort of what you're about, where your goals are, et cetera. Uh, but the test side might be a little different. So sort of big picture, the SAT and ACT serve for colleges to be able to measure your preparation for college level coursework and to match that with your course trajectory throughout high school as well. Um, so one thing to consider is that although it says optional, particularly for students that already have a strong academic record in rigorous coursework, strong grades, obviously, um, strong teacher recommendations, and ideally external academic exploration in their um, career field, they're going to expect that anyway, which makes sense, right? Um, so not submitting, consider that many other students in that applicant pool will, and although they may say they're not really looking at those, it's not to say that they don't take them into consideration. So on that note, be sure you're checking the individual schools um, testing policy for this current cycle and moving forward, because as we know, who knows where we'll be around testing, ideally it'll all be canceled by 2024, but that's not to say it will. Um, and the best strategy there, and all colleges will tell you the same, is look at the individual college's um, last entering class year medium score. So their 50% median score of the entry admitted students. If you fall above that, definitely submit your scores. If you fall below that 50 percentile, even by a short margin of 10 points or so, you're definitely not going to be in that selective group that they're looking for for candidates. So better not to submit. Um, and there will always be side contexts around that as well. Like I said, if, if you're not really able to highlight your academic strengths through that test, they're going to be looking for even more deeper dive on your academics to really stand out as stellar. And then in terms of other trends that we're seeing this past year too, Blair touched on this, which is very essential. Um, back to the activities, so building your extracurriculars. Um, I've heard this so many times in the past year, obviously all my activities were canceled or postponed. So I have this gap in my application, what to do. And now that we've seen the data from last year as well, there's really no more excuse for that, right? Because everything's available online now. And in a way, it's really opened up even more opportunities for students to take the lead, show initiative, and easy as transitioning your, your school clubs to Zoom meetings instead. So there's really no reason not to show that in continued engagement and going above and beyond. Uh, and within that, in terms of how admissions is reviewing that, uh, in case you're not aware of the admissions process, your applications are reviewed regionally. So any admissions officer reading your application will also see all the applications from your same school and region to get a context. So they know what is the academic rigor of your school? Are APs an option there? What are the extracurricular availabilities there too? Are you just doing what's available to you? Are you going above and beyond and really building your own opportunities? And I always say within that, never take no for an answer. And that's what really helps you stand out in this whole process of, I did it anyway. And if I couldn't get on, I've heard this one often, you know, I applied for the school newspaper or similar and I didn't get the role I wanted. Great, so go write your own blog, go make your own external newsletter as a result of that way more impactful anyway because you did it on your own and maybe you connected it to an external cause or partnership with a nonprofit as well so again back to that 
you know, the sky is the limit, particularly with all these virtual opportunities. Um, and for the sake of time, Blair did a good job of going over sort of overall strategy for success too, about time management, starting the planning early. I just covered sort of the activities, but the main thing is back to identifying your school list. Um, so no longer, as you see in this data, what school, what families may be considered were safety schools before last year, definitely are not, it's not the case anymore. So oftentimes those have shifted to more kind of target middle schools, if not maybe reach schools for some students. So keeping that in mind, that's also part of the college application of that demonstrated interest. So colleges will know when you're just applying because it's top ranked or because mom and dad want you to go to Harvard or bust. If that passion, that fit for their actual school, their community, what they're about, and the programs and initiatives they offer, if that's not there, that's how you get eliminated. And not so much about your grades and all the supporting information, but that goes back to the essays themselves too. Of If you're not genuinely into it, they're not going to be into you as well. It's as straightforward as that sometimes. Um, so on that note, uh, I wanted to shift for the sake of time too to sort of some next, we all kind of wanted to pitch in our, um, our overall tips for current 11th or 12th grade students, kind of what to do now, but also for rising seniors of sort of that preparation side. So Padji and Blair, if you're ready on that end, I can just continue where I am. Yeah, please continue and we, we will join you after, after, after you're done. Sure. Um, so we mentioned, right, that not everyone will have necessarily a full full access to a guidance and or college counselor, depending on your school. But because that counselor recommendation is required in your common app, you need to develop a relationship anyway. Uh, so starting that early as well, making sure they're aware that you're committed to your college career and your success at the high school level and personalizing it too, right? Feel free to mention what are your interests outside of school? How are you pushing those boundaries to explore those career interests and community involvements? Definitely number one. Um, on the other side, I just mentioned of being strategic about your school list but also determining which deadline round is a fit for me. Uh, kind of long story short, if your application and your overall profile is as strong as it's ever going to be now in time for those early rounds due in two weeks, November 1st mostly, um, that's when you want to definitely leverage that in terms of showing I'm committed to this school without a doubt. I will definitely go if accepted that can really set you up for success. Doesn't mean it's a shoe in but can definitely help you stand out in the competition that you are committed to the school. But on the other hand, if you're not really ready and you're just getting into this process now, um, or you're relying on a big spike in grades like Blair mentioned, maybe grade 12, then it might be a better option for you to apply in the regular decision round, which is typically early January. So you really have the rest of this semester to build up all those areas, solidify your recommenders, get some hardcore results around your extracurriculars as well. Um, and on that note, as I mentioned, um, back to the demonstrated interest. So that is a section in the Common App. Some schools actually track it officially. Others say they don't, but they sort of do. Um, so just keeping that in mind, it's not just you Googling the school and checking their website and copying and pasting their mission statement into your application, but what are you doing above and beyond in terms of I'm attending info sessions, I'm doing campus visits if I can, I'm getting involved with any podcasts they might offer, I'm reaching out to alumni, even professors, surprisingly they sometimes do respond. So really any way that you can divulge more about the school to determine if it's a serious fit for you and vice versa. Um, and just one little note on sort of Naviance versus the Common App. Uh, every school approaches this differently. If you're not familiar with the Naviance system as sort of a college prep um, software that many high schools use to sort of gather materials in preparation for applying, 
So they all use different aspects of it. And it happens to me every year that a student says, oh, my college counselor covered that. It's all a naviance. And yet they weren't. And they were just sitting there. So you really need to get on top of that and make sure, you know, are my recommenders submitted through there so it syncs to my Common App? Uh, are my transcripts selected there? And they'll also sync, making sure what part your school is involved in for you versus what's expected on your end. Um, Blair did a great job talking about sort of dissecting the personal statement there. Um, I just wanted to note one thing around that is um, she was talking about, you know, sort of the story that it tells. So keeping in mind that the application is read in order of you know, your grades, your coursework, uh, test scores, your activity list. So we already are creating a picture in our mind of sort of what you're about, what are your strengths, what are your goals. The next piece there is that personal statement. So this is where you really want to align that and tell that unique, memorable story that covers, you know, what are your interests in the college level? And we call that the application persona. So whether that's, you know, community-minded neuroscientist with the flair for guitar playing, putting all those pieces together to show how you really built on them overall. And I can't emphasize this enough is it's always going to be more compelling and impactful for you to really dive deep into one, perhaps up to three major activities, involvements, explorations, and really max them out, not within just your school, but beyond instead of having a maxed out resume of 20 activities that you did off and on maybe a year or so. So that's also part of that application persona of telling this fluid story of how I came to be where I am now. And I'll leave it off to you guys now to give your specific tips. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, fantastic uh, as always, Kelly. Uh, Blair, you want to add in anything on top of that? Uh, before I take up the last two uh, topics? Yeah, I mean, actually, Kelly, you covered pretty much everything that I was going to say, but honestly, like, just to kind of stress again, just the importance of building relationship with, you know, the assigned um, college counselor at your student's school, um, and the student needs to form that relationship, too. Um, so that's definitely going to be really important, regardless of whether or not you're working with um, an independent counselor, such as Kelly, Haji, and myself. Um, but you need to have that relationship because your school's counselor, like they can advocate for your student, they can talk to the college representatives on your behalf, whereas we can't do that. Um, and you also just need to make sure you're attending, um, you know, any information sessions or, you know, logging into the Zoom sessions that um, come from the college counseling office um, because you need to be informed. So you want to know about test dates. You want to know, again, like, you know, does your student have to submit their letters of recommendation through Naviance or through Common App? And is your college counselor going to take care of that for you? Um, all that information is, is really important. Um, and again, Kelly, you pretty much covered everything that I was going to say. So um, go ahead, Apache. Awesome. Thanks, both of you. I just want to take a couple of minutes on the last two items there, which is financial aid and final review. All right. Financial aid, I mean, it's definitely on every, every student's and definitely on every parent's mind. Um, so we are uh, offering financial aid uh, related help as well as a part of our services, whether it is FAFSA, whether it is CSS, where, when do you have to take PSAT and, and, and what your application should consider, what is your parents uh, role in there. So we, we, are, we are covering every aspect of that. And in fact, we are also helping the students to apply for merit scholarships uh, and any additional essays or any additional resumes that need to be built for that. So we offer end to end every aspect of the college preparation process. Um, and and I know we, we, are, we are sounding a little bit like we are, we are, we are only interested in 9th, 10th and 11th graders right now, but, but that's not the case. In fact, right now is our peak time for our senior, senior students. Um, and that's why Kelly and Blair has to drop off after this immediately. But if you are a 12th grader and if you, if you are, if you need any help, we are offering this service called as final review. I mean, it, it's a, it's a, 
couple of hours or less than one days of help that we are offering for each student we'll we'll, we'll review uh, your application your essays and everything at a high level and give give make sure do some sanity check and then and then make sure that everybody everything is in place and 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 also give any quick inputs on on any of the documents that you're that you're submitting along with your application so uh, senior students don't think that that you are too late yet okay so with that, I would like to go on to the next slide. Uh, of course, I mean, our results speak our, um, um, about us more than anything else. Right? So this is just one of the, our previous students. I mean, a small uh, testimonial from the student. Um, uh, let me see how it has to play. A hey, Girish uh, or Asheshu, are you on the call? Um, this is not coming up. Anyways, um, so there are testimonials on our website, so you can you can refer to them, um, and I can share this um, share these uh, uh, um, videos if you want. There are many testimonials of our earlier students. I think there is a small technical glitch here. Let me check if there is any solution being offered. I see. Um, they want me to play it from the Google Slides. So give me one second. All right, there it is. Uh, we are going to continue with our presentation. Um, all right. So, uh, first of all, um, our payment terms are, are the most affordable and the most easiest of, of the payment terms you can find in the market. Uh, all our payments are in subscription basis so you don't have to pay our fees in, in one shot it is, it is a subscription basis that we offer i mean throughout your journey with us um, it's a monthly monthly payment of, of subscription depending upon when you join us and and we are we are offering um, a a 15 percent discount for all the thana members um, as a token of a token of thanks as a token of appreciation and gratitude for for all the support we got from the thana organization so uh, please uh, uh, register with us or re reach out to us to avail this opportunity uh, 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 before uh, December 31st. 
and this code of uh, GM Tana 2021, which is Gromi Tana 2021. Um, please uh, refer that when you talk to us, um, so that we can we can make sure that you are from Tana, and 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 we can we can provide you that uh, discount before December 31st. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, so we are not a typical consulting company. Okay, I want to reiterate that as many times as I can. Um, we are uh, a, a technology enablement college preparation platform where the students uh, uh, can grow and evolve and, and achieve their targets through, through the help of technology in a very simplified and streamlined college preparation process. Uh, we believe that this the the way it is done today is not the it should not be that way. It uh, we are living in a world where everything we do is uh, is disrupted by technology and everything we do is simplified um, and changed over a period of five ten years. But but the college preparation is the same way it is done 75 50 years ago. So we are on a mission to to change that to revolutionize that to disrupt that. Okay, so uh, be a part of our team, be a part of our journey, and uh, um, we would like uh, you to uh, reach out to us and 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 uh, get connected with our ecosystem. With that, uh, uh, we would like to stop. And a big, big, big thanks to Thana team, um, Raja Garu, Ben uh, uh, Ram Toda Garu, and Anjay Garu. I mean, so nice of you, sir, to come on board, to come on to this uh, webinar and give you a few words. So we are very excited, very thankful. Um, and we would like to, I mean, open up for any questions that any of the team members, uh, Tana team members, might have for us. Thank you, Pajigaru, and the team, uh, Gromi, for a wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, actually, I think, uh, yeah, we can take uh, Q&A directly from the attendees if they have any. Uh, before that, I think I got some questions in the chat. Uh, I will ask them. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, please go ahead. Uh, any of you have any questions, please go ahead and uh, push it in the chat or either raise your hand so that we can go in the order. Yeah, so I think there is a question uh, from, I think, uh, Shriya. Uh, so she's asking a question about personal statement. Uh, and the question is, since the personal statements are hard to write, what is the best prompt or uh, writing to include to make yourself stand out? So any of you can. Um, Blade, Blade, Blade R. Kelly, you want to take it up? Yeah, so I mean, we can both. So there isn't a best prompt. Like there are seven, like I said, seven um, choices for you. And then you have that optional COVID essay. But I always tell students to just start writing and not write to a prompt initially, um, but really just kind of think about what it is, like what story you want to tell. Um, and, you know, again, like what um, values you want the admissions officers to know about you by the time they finish reading that essay, because you want to you want them to have some kind of connection to you, right? Because these are the people who will go to bat for you um, in, in admissions committees sometimes whenever we have to fight for a student. So if you have that personal connection that's through that essay, it's really gonna be helpful. So don't focus so much on the prompt, just more, like I said, the story you want to tell um, and in which one best suits that. But at the end of the day, like all of those prompts are about growth. Um, so if you can demonstrate that, that's what's most important. Yeah, excellent, well said. I would just add to that, right, is that, um, I always say, imagine if the rest of your application got lost, which it won't, never happens, right? But if no other pieces were there, what would be that essential info about you that is personal, that is a human connection, that's not about your resume, your grades, et cetera, that really reveals your intrinsic personality that will make the admissions you know, champion for you as well. So keeping that in mind and not what you think they want to hear because oftentimes, if not all the time, more of those intimate, simple stories are really the most compelling and memorable beyond, you know, really gloating about yourself and reminding them of your resume. Right, right. Uh, and a quick uh, add from my side too. I mean, the best essay is the unique essay. I mean, right, that's the fundamental rule. So. Uh, you have to you have to make it as unique as possible and the only way you can do it 
unique is when you re represent true version of you because the only thing unique about a student is is the student's thought process a student's perspective right so if you can reflect that thought process and perspective um, um, on, on any given topic that that uh, essay will stand unique okay thank you blair kelly and Pazi for great answers uh, so i think uh, rishi i saw you raising your hand i'll come to you before that i'll take one more question from this chat uh, there is another question from jahnavi naik uh, so she's asking does it help to highlight my summer touring job in my essay also what is the academic rigor Can you repeat, does it help to do what? Can you say the first to part To highlight again? my summer tutoring job in my essay. Also, what is academic rigor? Um, so in terms of highlight my summer activities, definitely because one, they potentially, depending on where you are in your high school, um, could be an internship, could be pre-college academic program, could be a mentorship, which is research guided, could be I developed an app and now I'm testing it out in the field. So really will depend on there, but definitely want to show that you didn't sit around all summer. Um, so highlighting that. And it also depend on the um, supplemental essays that you're responding to. If some, for example, Stanford want to know explicitly what you did beyond just what's in your activities list. And that again goes back to this balance of not just an academic response, but did I get more involved with my family? Did I travel? Did I teach myself Mandarin on Duolingo? Did I become, you know, the chef of the household? Did I start a whole new creative project that I never had time to before? So really giving that back to the sort of um, well-balanced, well-rounded student, that's definitely going to stand out too. Again, just not resume droppers. And the other part of the question was, can you remind us? What is the academic rigor? All at Blair. Blair is excellent at that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so academic rigor is just, um, you know, like the more advanced courses that you take. So, you know, if you're, so Kelly mentioned that, you know, the schools are going to know your individual high school. And a lot of times how they do that is through, you know, visiting your school um, and then also through the school profile. So your school profile, if, you, if you're not familiar with it, go and take a look. But you know, as Kelly, um, it'll it'll kind of break down what your school offers. So how many AP courses or IB courses, honors, things like that. Um, so colleges are going to want to see that you've taken, you know, as many APs as you can. Again, in those core subjects. Um, so that's rigor, and then you want to make sure you have increased rigor. So. Um, you know, some schools won't allow you to start an AP, start APs until like sophomore year. Again, that's going to be listed on the school profile. So like, don't freak out if you can't. But um, that's what rigor is, those more advanced courses. Uh, thank you, Kelly and Blair. Uh, so Rishi, can you go ahead, unmute and ask your question directly? Rishi, I see. You raising your hand. Are you there? What's your question? Okay, so I'll read another question from the chat while we wait for Rishi to ask. So there is another big long question from Atindra and Ravindra. I think, uh, is there a job on the market that if we choose, there could be an overwhelming amount of people in the field, indeed making our students find themselves in a concerned market full of engineers and uh, won't be able to find a stable job. What do the students do then? Per se, what job should they pick so they won't be concerned? Is there a unique job in the vast fields of internet and the world that so few people know about yet we have interest in it, such as Example, genetic modification of plants and agricultural foods and drugs, etc. Okay, let me let me take that. Okay, it's a, it's a very 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 broad question, um, Ravindra. Or, or, uh, first of all, if you are asking for what what is the preferred choice of of 
of undergrad education to get into the best job i mean that that's that that's a that that can uh, debate over over 2 3 days okay but i mean what we bring to the table as i mentioned earlier is 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 the market outlook i mean how how the market trends are going how the industry trends are going how the technology trends are going and how the how various uh, uh, companies are are doing what are their forecast of of hiring so we will bring that kind of information which will which will act as a very good a uh, pointer for the student to make up their mind the second part of your question um, it it is mostly leading towards biomedical or or bioengineering if if i understand it correctly so if you want to get into genetics or gene gene biology or stem biology then 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 that's a part of our counseling session we 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 will we will help you identify what is involved in all these technologies all these domains um where the where the research is happening and where uh, the most uh, most number of jobs are being posted uh, in stem by bi- stem cell biology what is the latest research who are the top scientists we give you that kind of information so that you can narrow down your your selection within within the biomedical or bioengineering process i hope i answered your question at least to some extent if not please reach out to us directly and we'll be more than happy to talk to you about it okay thank you i think rishi now you can go ahead Yes, so I have this is my question. Um is it better if I balance IB uh classes and AP classes or is it better if I have more APs than IBs or how does that work? Mm, that's a good one. Play if you want to take it up. Can yeah, we- so it doesn't really matter because I mean they're both pretty similar. Um so again it's just going to be about, you know, you're having increased rigor. um and then you know you'll obviously you'll have your ap um i think what where it might matter more is like once you are in college so typically to get like credits for your ap courses you'll need like a 5 or 4 or 5 rather um on that exam and that can like place you out of some of the like um you know the basic classes at the beginning so that can kind of help you get to your major faster things like that and same with ib it's typically going to be 6 or 7 but they're they're looked at essentially the same so it really just kind of depends on um on you and what what works best for you but they're both obviously um very rigorous courses okay thank you so there is another question from saket uh he's asking i think uh, how do we join these uh, i think sessions or counseling sessions that uh, gromi is offering Not so yet, uh, yeah that. there is yeah. our contact information you can send an email to hello@gromi.ei or you can whatsapp us on on 5108065216 either way you can reach out to us um, and and we'll come back to you uh, very shortly thank you paji so the next questions are related to the fees and uh, the cost structure of the four year counseling at gromi uh yeah so if you can give or you i think you can contact them uh, but definitely i think opaji you can go ahead and give some overview yeah so as i mentioned ours is a subscription plan first of all and the subscription plan depends upon when you join us if you join us in the in the 11th grade then it will be in a different subscription plan uh, versus if you join us in the 9th grade or 10th grade right so please contact us uh, we will be more than happy to explain to you uh, our our cost model and our, our pricing but one thing i can tell you is uh, we are extremely extremely low compared to what the competitors are and and our our payment method is very friendly it's a subscription model um, on a monthly basis uh thank you paji uh, so the next question is uh, something that is being answered i think but i will ask again what is the difference between taking ap versus ip yeah i think i think they are the same i mean as per as per blade just explained okay thank you uh, so the next question is uh, what is the impact of 529 contributions in college scholarship decision what is the impact of 529 contributions in college scholarship decision making that's the question okay um Kelia Blair you want to take it up is that in your jurisdiction I I'll let you take that one because I'm not like that strong in terms of financial aid and stuff So okay uh, when is a 529 contribution uh, can you be more specific there with the question please 
Yeah, I think the question is coming from Shashagiri Kaisa. If you are there, you can unmute and ask yourself, but I will read again. What is the impact of 529 contributions in college scholarship decision? So I think people, those who contributed to 529, uh, their kids know how uh, they are impacted in terms of scholarship uh, granting us. So I think that's the question. Is that right, Sashigiri? Sashigiri Kasagaru, if you are there, please unmute and ask. Okay, maybe you can reach out to us, I mean, um, through these channels and, and we'll be more than happy to talk to you about it. So because we are not 100% clear of whether it is your contribution or our or, or college contribution. I'm, I'm not I'm not very clear there with the question. Sorry. Sure, sure. Yeah, please uh, go ahead and reach out to them uh, and then they will give you a detailed answer. So let's move on to the next question. Uh, this question is coming from Hasini. What are all the financial aids for H1B dependent kids who studied middle and high schools in USA? So the visa uh, definitely come and um, plays a role. Uh, most of the uh, scholarships available out there are for citizens only, right? But but it doesn't mean that I mean H1B visa holders don't get any scholarships. We we encourage all our students to apply um, to um, uh, the the FAFSA and the CSS. They don't they don't really care about your visa as long as you are on a valid visa in this country you are eligible. However, some some merit scholarships and and some some um, um donation based scholarships they they emphasize and they may make it mandate for you to be a citizen but i mean um if you are on h1b you are more than eligible like any other student to apply and and we can explain you more in detail if you want to talk to us okay thank you so i think there is a question about personal essay i think the question is uh is coming from srini chenda kindi so the personal essay has to be unique or has to be best to get better results <laughs> well i mean i think i think he picked on my on my line so best is a relative term sir i mean here there is you cannot say a a a, a, a an essay by looking at it if it is best right see the the idea here is I mean, which one, which one of these um, catch the attention of the evaluator? I mean, it doesn't mean that if you write, if you write in the most sophisticated English with all, all, all superlative degree awards, um, it means that you you are going to get admission. No, right? I mean, the content and and, and the genuinity of it, and 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 more importantly, I mean, as 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 Kelly and Blair both emphasized, the connection of you to that, right? What it means to you, what. How much is your involvement there, right? That is that is what the key factor is. I mean, last year one of the students wrote an essay on comma, the the the, the comma uh, the syllable comma in in English. Uh, I mean, I mean her argument is that the comma is the most powerful word in the in the entire English vocabulary, and she wrote a beautiful essay about it, and she got into one of the Ivy leagues, right? So it is it is the best essay is kind of a pseudonym according to me i mean it, it, it an essay that catches the eye of the evaluator and an essay that stands in the competition is the best essay at that point right how do you make get the uh, attention of the evaluator and how do you stand in competition with others is being unique being genuine being true truthful to yourself and more importantly have that emotional connection to that yeah, I would agree. Just authenticity is is really important. And I mean, at the end of the day, you're t you're a 16, 17 year old writing an essay, you know, yeah. so yeah. It, it needs to just be genuine. Um, and it's, you know, it's not like expected to be a great novel or anything like that. It just has to represent who you are, because um, that's really who they care about is who they're bringing to um, the college campus. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We have few more questions so let's continue so this question comes from Sri Lashmi Garu and uh, I think in the in the outline of the presentation I think you guys mentioned about FEA FSA but it was not discussed could you please elaborate so you mean the, the regarding the scholarships 
Yeah, maybe. As mentioned, FAFSA was not discussed. Could you oh, please? Oh, FAFSA. So FAFSA is 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 one of the scholarships that are available out there. It is a it is a federal student aid. Okay, yeah, it's just federal student aid applicable to every student, whether you are on H one or or L one, maybe not L one, but H one or green card or or anything, right? Um, as long as you are on a valid visa, I mean, it is applicable, and you have to apply it sooner. I mean, sooner in the sense the the, the application window just started open uh, on on October first, and and we are we are helping the students to do that application as part of our our service catalog service offerings, and there is another uh, uh, um, popular scholarship called as CSS, and for that you have to write PSAT either in the ninth grade or in the tenth grade, right? So. If you want to talk to us, please give us a call. I'll send an email, and we will give you more information on that. And I could expand on that just a little bit. So sure. for the FAFSA, that's going to be based on the previous year's income taxes, um, and that's for federal um, like based aid. Whereas the CSS profile that that, that Upaji mentioned, that's going to be for institution institutional based aid. Um, so it's money that the school is going to give you versus versus the government. Um, so just it goes into um, just a lot more detail in terms of like mortgage, car note, of other students in college. Um, so that's kind of the difference between the two as well. Great. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So there is another question from Soumya. So I'm a seventh grader. How do I start and when do I start preparing for college? Well, I mean, uh, glad to hear from you, Soumya. I mean, uh, Seventh grade is definitely not too early to start. I mean, uh, it, it takes it takes a couple of years for the students to figure out what they want to be, right? And 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 this evolution process is 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 the sooner the better you start. So you can start right now and 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 start joining our ecosystem and start attending our seminars, start attending our charity events, start attending our our personality development seminars, start attending um get get inputs from us regarding what kind of seminars you need to take certification courses trainings what you need to take so we will we'll start grooming you right now right so that by the time you come to your ninth grade or tenth grade you already know what you want to do you already have an action plan in place you already have a, a, a set of set of tasks and deadlines um, already figured out for you so your preparation will be much more organized streamlined and less painful but uh, versus if you come to us in like 10th or 11th grades I mean, it's kind of too late. I mean, I mean, forget about coming to us in the twelfth grade, which most of the students are doing. But, but I mean, coming the earlier you come to us, the more we can help you out to groom and and harness your talents and 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 extract the best version of you and prepare the best profile of you to be submitted to the college applications. Okay, thank you, Apaji. Uh, so the next question is from Virup Kuncham. My school is mostly IB. Is it better to take AP or IB DYP courses? Yeah, I mean, kind of answer this. Like, if your school offers IB, it's it's perfectly fine. So there's yeah. you know, just go for IB. high mm. level, standard level, but just rigor is, is what matters. Thank you. So the next question is from Ishita Dujjavarapu. She's asking about, can you give me some examples of good extracurricular activities in the field of CS for top colleges? See, extracurriculars, I mean, are irrespective of the domain or are, are irrespective of your career choice. Okay. And so don't think that there are some extracurriculars good for computer science, some extracurriculars is good for electrical engineering. It is not like that. Okay. But of course, pre-med, I mean, of course, you may want to do a little bit of different for towards medical um, um, orientation. But... Coming to the uh, engineering side, I mean, and even for the business side, they're all the same, right? Um, I mean, so uh, getting getting into personality development, improving your presentation skills, doing community and charity work, um, and uh, developing a, a, a good hobbies like and sports, um, or, or, or gaining getting more uh, public speaking and, and, and participating into hackathons and participating into robo raves. All these things matter. All these things prove that you are preparing yourself towards your area of interest. I hope I answered that question. Okay, yeah, thank you. So, I think there is a Chaitanya who raised the hand. 
before I continue with chart based questions, I just uh, give him opportunity. Uh, Chaitanya, can you unmute and ask your question? Sure, sure. Thank you. So uh, I heard about demonstrated interest. So when we reach professor, like what question should we ask? Also, which in uh, like in a junior year or sophomore year, which high school year should we start reaching out to professors and uh, uh, the school alumni? And uh, like, how should we approach them? Like through LinkedIn or like just going to their email and the school website? What question should we get to them? Which professors? Uh, like, uh, like uh, you know, the particular uh, sorted colleges, like whatever the list we have. Uh, like uh, I heard during the seminar, like uh, when you talking about uh, demonstrated interest, like uh, uh, show interest, uh, like by reaching out to professors and alumni or attending info sessions from the college. Uh, so the, the contacts of these professors are available on, on, on each college department's websites, right? In, in most of the cases or or you can get their names from there and, and contact them through LinkedIn. So either way is fine. Yeah, I would just say just make sure you have, you know, your student has a purpose, right? Because mm -hmm. um, there are some sometimes like professors will meet with students whenever they come on campus. Um, you know, sometimes it's, it's a good kind of intro to possibly do research over the summertime, you know, things like that become like a research assistant. So it just as long as it's as it's meaningful. Um, that's, you know, that's really important. Thank you for the question. Thank you guys for the answer. So let's uh, take the last few questions from the chat. So the, the next question comes from Pramila Mani. How does scholarships play an important role in applying for colleges? How can we earn school scholarships? Well, again, scholarships are not guaranteed to anybody. I want to be very, 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 very clear on that. And you apply and 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 if you if you meet all their criteria if you meet their criteria of the salaries if you meet their criteria of uh, like income tax and and all other all other uh, uh, filtering criteria and you will get it right but uh, there is no there is no uh, guarantee that anybody can give you whether whether you are qualified for one scholarship versus another scholarship or one school versus another school 100 different parameters come into picture before they before they grant scholarships um out of students i mean sometimes they they, they, they might consider they might not consider um, i mean um in-house I and mean, federal federal aid that fluctuates as you know right and and so there are many many different parameters that come into picture so please don't expect any guarantee uh, uh, in in getting any of the scholarships we'll just try, do our best to educate you and then help you apply to those and okay. I'll, I'll add one more thing and then i have to i have to hop off um i have some personal statements that i need to review but um just in terms of scholarships so you know like apaji said you can't depend on those um especially because you know a lot of merit-based aid just it's dwindling in a lot of these schools so for some schools, um, like for instance, I used to work at University of Miami and scholarship review was part of the process automatically. So the student was admitted and they, you know, they were able to get a scholarship from us that would be in the offer letter. But then for some of the more competitive scholarships like full tuition, room and board, that would be like a separate um, interview process where students at that time would come to campus and they would kind of like compete for those scholarships. So there are different ones. Um, and then some schools like, let's say like Vanderbilt, for instance, once you submit your application, then they have other, like a separate essay um, process that you have to go through. Um, and then they'll review those essays. I think BU, Boston University is like that as well. Um, but there's also, there's always outside scholarships. So whether it's like $500, whether it's $5,000, um, a really great website that I recommend is Going Mary. And it's kind of like, a common application for scholarships because you enter all of your information in there and you can um, <clears throat> be matched with different scholarships and I'm <clears throat> losing my voice, sorry, and like send your transcripts and everything through Going Mary. Um, so that's a great one. And then like, yeah, College Web, VASPA. So those can always be applied towards your tuition, but then it might kind of adjust um, your financial aid package. So you have to be careful with that. But that's always better. Um, those outside scholarships are always better anyway. All right, I need to hop off, but it was really um, nice speaking with all of you this evening. And, you know, thanks so much for, for joining us. 
Thank you, Blair. And I think Kelly also had already dropped off, I guess, right? Um, yeah. As I mentioned, I mean, they both have very tight deadlines in talking to other students. I mean, um, they're already pinging us. So, yeah, but I'll be here um, um, to answer any further questions, Ramgar. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, I think Kelly already left. Thank you, Kelly, and thank you, Blair, uh, for our great uh, service. Uh, uh, we appreciate uh, Gromi's help. Uh, definitely, we'll continue to finish the rest of the questions and we'll reach out to you for the next steps. Thank you. So, I think a few more questions, uh, Pajagaru, if we can. Yeah, sure. take, we can, otherwise. Okay, let me see. One minute. There are some repetitive questions, but... Okay, so I think uh, my school offers AP courses. So taking AP courses is enough to do, or do we need to get minimum of 4.0 in the AP exams? That's coming from Srini. Well, I mean, taking AP exams is, 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 is always good and scoring more in the AP exams definitely adds value. If you take an AP exam and if you get a 2.5, I mean, it is actually more detrimental than 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 it than it can help you, right? Because you are you are aiming for something which which you are not capable of. That's what they think, you know. See, I mean, at the end of the day, right? I mean, your your uh, scores only speak some extent of you, right? They they read more into your scores. They read more than the numbers into your scores. If you take an AP and, and didn't do well, it's a it's a very, very, very bad remark on you. Right. Um, so they look at the mentality of the student. They look at the 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 perspective and the and, and the thought process of the student than the marks itself. Right. That's where that's where the complexity comes. So don't go by just don't go by just the numbers, please. OK, thank you. Uh, so. Thanks for the session. What is your recommendation about on which grade that the student can start this subscription for best results? So we have, we, yeah, we have students. I mean, most of the students this year are joining us in the ninth grade, right? Um, and and that's where the high school starts. But there are there are handful of students who are in the seventh grade who already joined us, right? So it depends on your interest. The more the more you are accustomed with us, the more we understand you. The more we understand you, the better we can help you. Okay, thank you. So the next question is from Jyoti Dhammata Party, Dhammala Party, I think. What about dual enrollment with community college? Is that equal to AP courses? No, no. Dual enrollment with community college is not equivalent to AP courses. So that, that uh, I mean, AP courses is, is in your school and community colleges is outside. And the way they look at the, the grades from the community colleges and the, the way they they give the overall rating is different for, for both these processes. So that those two are different. Okay, so I think uh, maybe this is a repetition, but uh, someone is asking, Virup, I think. Also, my teachers have said that IB courses are 4.5 GPA while AP are 5. Is this correct? Mm, I haven't I haven't come across that 4.5 GPA uh, so far, to be honest, but I can I can double check. Okay. But is the either it's either four or five, but not four point five GPA. I I haven't come across that number so far. Sorry. Sure. Yeah. So there is another question. Uh, if in twelfth grade your career interest changes from all the classes for the career pathway you have done in high school, how does that work? Very good question. And this is this is a very a very common scenario, right? Um, I, and and it is always possible um, that that you are still evolving and and something might change in your mindset or something might might change in your in your thought process and say hey i don't want to be a biomedical uh, person um, uh, anymore but i want to pursue data science right i mean nobody is stopping you from that um, so if if the difference or if the the difference of angle between these two if you are preparing for electrical engineering and if you are shifting towards computer science then there might not be too much of a difference. I mean, right? I mean, because the trainings and the certification courses and the projects and the internships that you might have done will be will be towards electrical engineering and 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 there there might be some overlap and relevance towards computers. But 
if you are preparing towards let us say business major um, and if you've done an internship in, in, in for business um, or if you are preparing for uh, i mean uh, bioengineering or pre med and then you have done an internship in one of the laboratories or hospitals and you shift to computer science then then definitely there will be an impact on on the quality of your essays because i mean you have to justify a lot you have, there is nothing wrong here there is nothing there is nothing um, i mean detrimental here but but you have to justify you have to justify why you have done that and if you have a compelling reason that is that is easily bought in um, that is easily accepted right but it's all depends on why you did that what made you to did that uh, and you can say hey i mean i have done this internship before i changed my mind and 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 then i changed my mind so so right now i'm aiming for this which is perfectly okay scenario yeah i think there is a common question uh, from saumya saket anant all of these are asking like no uh, one is asking my kid is seventh grade now uh, how early should we start contacting you and what is the best grade to start this program so can you talk about the best grade to start so so as i said the earlier the better right i mean Uh, we we have students who are in the seventh grade who joined us, and we have students who who joined us from eighth grade and ninth grade also, right? The earlier you you make us join, and the better um for the student, and um and the fees I mean will not be more if you join us in the seventh or eighth grade. We will distribute that that total fees into four years or five years depending upon when you join us, right? So uh. talk to us come and talk to us and we'll be more uh, more happy to explain to you and give you more details than giving a, st- a generic statement of when is the best college when is the best year to start here yeah so thank you i think uh, that answers uh, the next question is uh, what is the best way to save for college some talk about 5 to 9 plans but i have also heard that i can limit the financial aid if i go with 5 to 9 so other option i have had is life insurance any advice on these savings well i mean we we are not offering financial counseling for how do you save for colleges let me be very honest there we are only the only financial counseling we are offering is what kind of scholarships are available out there and how do you go about them and what you are qualified for what you are not qualified for how do you save for your kids college education that is that is your personal thing right i mean uh, so sorry that's not our area to to uh, guide you in that in the direction yeah so thank you uh, the next question is from guy 3 garaga garu can you please explain a little bit more about the measurements and the standards or certificates for extra curricular activities so the standards that there are no i mean uh, Uh, like fixed industry standards for extracurricular activities right i mean if you play tennis i mean you should be able to i mean justify what playing tennis to you and 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 how does it how did it help you as a student as a person right uh, rather than i mean i got i got three local certificates in 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 in, in, in tennis and it doesn't mean anything to me right so there is a lot of emotional quotient here i mean that's what we want to stress upon in every in every topic we are talking about right they, it is not like india where you say uh, where you say i got i got three certificates from this training center in java um, i got i got uh, i mean distinction and and first class and, and and two first classes nobody cares about that what java means to you and how you are going to use java in your life is what you are you, are, you have to explain in your essay right so these these are the only tangible thing the only tangible thing that goes along with your application is your transcript the gpas and your sat and act scores if at all if at all they are, they are, they are applicable but all the extra curriculars are are mostly mostly subjective and you have to explain what they mean to you and what how much you struggled there that 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 explanation carries the value rather than the 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 value the, the certificates by themselves so there is yeah. no there is no standard to answer your question there is no standard in certification levels i mean um in 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 your extra curriculars everything matters okay thank you i think we already answered this next question from somyo about seventh grader and uh, how do i start when do i start preparing you answered it so the next question is from satya my kid is eighth grade what kind of preparations we should do 
from now and how we should make our kid ready for it so first thing you have to talk to us and we will we will explain you and your kid i mean um, what uh, the process of preparation is and what the action plan would look like and then and then we can take it from there okay so thank you so i think last time we were uh, in doubt about the 529 question and the clarity of that i think uh, seshagiri kasagaru he came back uh, he typed the explanation the 529 question is about parent contribution to kids account contributing much will be considered as negative by college in school decision oh 529 oh sorry okay maybe i i misheard that so see the the fundamental criteria for the college uh, to give scholarship is what's the total income and what is the total payment that that you are that you have to make towards the college tuition fees right and if you have a an account set aside that you already set aside towards the college preparation that that still that is that still is counted into into your your monthly expenses right if your salary is let's say $5000 and if your monthly expenses $3000 and um and, and the college tuition fees is is more than $2000 that's when they'll consider you 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 are qualified for 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 a scholarship right so if you set aside five to, into the 529 funding but it is your money right and and you are spending from there and then it might it might i mean give you some additional leverage that that you are that you are more proactive and, and prepared for the student but from sheer granting of the of the scholarship process i i personally don't think it will have any impact but but having said that i'll be more than happy to to check with with other uh, other of our team members who are not here right now and see if they have any more details for for, for you yeah so yeah i think there are some questions about scholarships i think it's better for them to reach you out on that or shall i yeah sure i mean unless it is it is totally different but if they are in the same line as i mean as yeah yeah how do we apply for scholarships do we need any recommendation letters from the school do we need to apply through the school counselors no the scholarships don't require any 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 recommendation letters or anything from the counselors scholarship is purely from the student and the parent yeah so the next question is uh, gorantla um hi amisha in seventh grade does my current middle school or high school ratings matter in college admissions they don't uh, but but uh, as kelly was mentioning before what they look at is if the school rating is very 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 high then then even a 3.9 gpa is considered much higher um than a school that is not rated too too high for example uh, in the bay area where we live i mean uh, cupertino schools are are, are are ranked very high so a gpa of 3.7 3.8 from the cupertino schools is valued at the same level as 4.5 or 4.6 from other schools within the bay area right so it's a relative it's a relative uh, uh, um, value given to the gps so if your school is not top rated one then then you have to show much higher gpa uh, in order to stand um, in the crowd all they look at is all they look at is what is your position in your in your particular school if you are if you are in the top 10 or top 20 of your school that's all they care whether it is 4.5 gpa that makes it or 3.8 gpa that makes it they don't care as long as you are in the top 20 top 30 uh, up to top, up to up till top 50 in your school they value that you are a very 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 bright student okay thank you so that the does the student have to do extra curricular activities all four years of high school and does these require a certificate as proof so yes the 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 extra curriculars have to be done from 9th grade onwards and of course there are there are there are certificates and there are recommendation letters given by by whatever activities you do i mean most of them and some of them some of them you just get number of hours and they don't give a certificate right but no matter what i mean um it is it is up to you how you um explain it and and defend it in your in your essay that matters right i have done 60 hours of charity service in a homeless shelter in the last 3 years 
boom i mean that that doesn't that doesn't mean anything uh, unless you mention that what what prompted you to do to do a charity service and what you gained while while doing the charity service and and what kind of of emotions and and what kind of sentiments that that you that you developed or overcame during this this charity service and how you are planning to do the charity service in 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 your future that is what more important than than whether you are doing 60 hours or or, or 80 hours right a student who says i j- i could do, do only 40 hours because of whatever reasons and but this is what i learned from it that carries more weight than a student who just says i did 160 hours of charity service in homeless shelter i go there every every sunday and monday uh, or sunday and and and, and serve the people on um, food from 8 to 10 am boom that's it it doesn't it doesn't mean anything it doesn't say anything so which carries more weightage the earlier one carries more weightage than than this 160 hours of of of, of just a number um, uh, mentioning yeah so thank you i think uh, there is another question from chaitanya so demonstrated interest when we reach particular college professors what should we ask on which high school year should we start reaching professors and alumni i think we answered this question i mean it all depends on what colleges you sh- when are shortlisted for you first thing right and then and then how how you are how you are going to reach, what what is your main reason why you are contacting them is it just to say hi or is it just to uh, just to uh, i mean um, get more leverage in the admissions or or what is the purpose you are you are trying to reach out to them have you done any project that you want their feedback on or are you publishing a white paper that you want their support on or or what is the purpose right i mean that's what is the main critical thing that you need to understand uh, uh these these professors and lecturers are are, are the, ex- the most busiest people very 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 busy people with their schedules and they don't respond to each and every student you have to convince them you have to grab their attention um in order to in order to, for them to respond to you but even if they respond to you there is no guarantee that hey this is my student please take him into my class he they cannot say that right so th- there is there is a huge process here and and the underlying factor is how serious hard working and genuine the student is and that's what that's what makes makes the ma- makes the difference okay thank you so i think there are uh, some questions about the recording of this session and uh, sharing of that i think we are having a recording uh, so we'll see how we can distribute that to the tana members uh definitely uh, it will come out but uh, we'll have to find out uh, the right way so thank you and uh, there is another question from hasini uh suppose a student not good about extra curricular activities what are other options the schools school clubs consider in college admissions yes i mean everything you do outside of your academics out of, outside of your subjects is considered extra curriculars extra curriculars doesn't mean you have to go out of the campus of the of the school extra curricular means i mean if you are aiming for artificial intelligence or or or, or machine learning as your subject matter of interest you are preparing something towards that but anything that you do outside that is extra curriculars right whether you you participate in your school uh, um, school dance program or whether to whether you participate in your uh, uh, schools um a speech and debate program whether you do charity outside of it or whether you uh, start tutoring um, fifth and sixth graders within your school everything is extra curriculars okay got it yeah so where can we find two groups of schools list related to uc and columbia from where we can find two groups of schools list related to uc and columbia once we are in school site what the school interests in competition regarding the market outlook the question is coming from krishna bosam if you are there can you speak out yeah i'm sorry i i honestly don't understand the question from where can we find two groups of schools listed related to uc and columbia so maybe they are asking about schools that are good for admission into uc columbia later okay uh, first of all first of all uc is a university it has nine campuses columbia is is one 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 one, one college yeah yeah so i yeah reach out to them i suggest you reach out to them for a detailed 
uh, explanation of your question. Please. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, what would be the ideal number of colleges to apply to cover all application times, to cover all application times, I think. I mean, again, it is not driven by application times. Okay, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being a blunt here, but it depends on what is your kid's area of interest and what colleges offer the best programs and where does he or she stand the best chances. That is, that should be your, your, your deciding factors, not the, not the uh, early action or early decision or, or, or rolling, uh, rolling decisions or regular decisions. That's not the criteria, right? Your criteria is what your kid wants, what are the best colleges and where does the student stands the best chances. And then once you have that list, then of course, do you want to go for early action? Do you want to go for early decision? Do you want to go for regular action? That, that, that those questions come later. Okay. Okay. Uh, should we not submit AB scores if it's less than four score? No, definitely. I mean, uh, I know you should. You should submit. You should submit it, right? And most of the colleges they send the AP scores along with the trans transcripts. Most most of the schools, right? I mean, and if they are sending, then you you cannot stop it. And but I I would say that you have to submit your 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 AP courses. But the point I was making earlier is is if you are taking AP courses and if you are scoring very low on them, very low on them, that reflects very bad on you. Not not only just scoring low on that on that subject, but it overall on your on your capacity and on overall on your on your mindset. That's what they would look for. Right? That's where that's where I'm, I'm trying to use that as an example that the colleges read more through these marks. They don't read just numbers. Okay, Krishna Garu, if you have. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, yeah, my question is specific to school is like, uh, uh, like from top to, yeah, uh, like uh, what uh, different kind of schools are related to either, uh, you know, medicine or uh, different specific area and uh, what are the top to, you know, the down list, you know, that way, like we can choose and uh, we can go to their website. Okay, uh, Krishna Garu, I, I'm sorry to say, I'm still not clear on your question, but this is what I think I understand. If, if you, if you join our program, we will provide you with a short list of colleges, um, which are which are in line with your kids' interests, which are we, where we think the kid has better chances to stand um, to get admission, and considering your other criteria. First, for example. Do you are you okay with out of state colleges or are you okay with private colleges and we will give you the the fees information for each of them how much it will cost for out of state how much it costs for private school and if you are for for medical then do you want to go for a bsmd program um, or do you want to go for just regular four-year program so there are many criteria like this we consider before we give you a list of a list of shortlisted colleges for your kid and this list is unique for each and every student yeah, got it. Thank you. Okay, I think we'll, uh, we'll uh, I think wrap up in another five minutes. I'll uh, go with the last one or two questions. Uh, I think Anandgar is asking, this is a great initiative by Grovi and I wish you team all the best. You mentioned something about the technology enablement and bringing a change in an age old process of preparedness for college education. How are you planning to do this? Do you have any university partnerships or roadmaps, etc.? Um, so Anand Garu, thank you for your comments. Um, and as I said, we are a, another Silicon Valley startup. Okay, we we are funded by Twitter uh, and and senior directors from Twitter um, in our angel round, and we are building this enormous platform, um, uh, which is a mobile app driven, and which which is going to revolutionize this whole thing. So we are a technology company. Um, I mean, uh, we are in the very early stages of of offering these services. I mean, in a couple of years, most of these activities will be driven through our app, and that's where we are we are heading. Um, so, if you want to talk more, I will be more than happy to brainstorm this with you. You can reach out to us um, offline. Okay, thank you. 
So is there any website where we can see list of electives we can choose if you want to specifically concentrate in certain fields like medical, so on? Uh, like a guide a, of electives related to each field. Yeah. There, there is no site like that, Andy. And that's where we come into picture. That's where, I mean, um, we we add real value here. I mean, we, we give a list of 12 to 15 colleges list for each of our students where we think they have better chances of admission. And of course, um, I mean, we'll consider all other factors also, as I mentioned, like out of state, like private schools and BSMD programs and whatnot. And this list is a starting point for the student and the parent and, and to discuss if they want to add more, if they want to, if they want to, uh, I mean, remove any one of them. So uh, that, that's a starting point for us to have a discussion before we finalize the, the final list of colleges. But you by yourself, you if you want to do, you have to spend like another one week or 10 days to do I mean, thousand Google searches to get to that list by yourself. Yeah, I think uh, maybe the last question. Uh, a lot of people are asking about the extracurricular activities. I think uh, what you recommend for pre mid, uh, mid school, I think pre med, pre med maybe pre med school. So yeah. for pre med, I mean, um, so let me let me use this opportunity to explain to uh, regarding our services. We start with a, a thorough counseling sessions for the students. We help the student narrow down onto one or two areas areas of choice. From then we will we'll generate a very, very, very detailed action plan that including personality development, that includes subject matter readiness, that includes uh, which trainings you need to take, which certifications you need to take, what pro we have in-house projects that will make the students um, which are very, 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 very um, highly acclaimed projects. These are industry driven projects, industrially applicable projects. And also we have tie ups with some startup companies to do internships and, and we, we offer these internships for the students who are interested in um, in their 11th, um, 10th, after 10th grade. And we are able to offer these internships for, for, for uh, engineering and business students, but for pre-med students, it is it is a little bit tough as you can imagine especially last two years with covid i mean it has made even tougher no no laboratories no hospitals is allowing um is allowing any um any students um to come into their campuses yet right it is things are opening up a little bit but for for pre-med uh i think uh, finding a volunteership in, in any local hospitals or any local dentists or any local laboratories would be a very 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 good thing and if you are in the Bay Area and, and some of the areas where we are very predominantly present, we are, we are helping the students to reach out to them. And, and we are also offering some services that you can do online. So uh, please talk to us and we will try our best to help you out. But I don't want to promise an internship for a pre-med student because of the circumstances um, 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 around us right now. Okay, I think Srilash Migaru, if you have a question, please go ahead. there are a lot of already established companies right you know they, there is a lot of other things who's advertising and they also kind of similar what you guys are doing so so specific coming to you and your organization what are the top five points you you say that unique from the others so first of all i mean um as i mentioned in the early stages of our of our uh, presentation we are not a, a, a typical uh, consulting company we are way beyond that way beyond that in two reasons one we are making the student do projects and and these projects are, are are from various domains and various technologies and various business angles which are which are helping the students a lot towards enhancing their their interest and harness their skill set and 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 knowledge and we are we are helping the students to find internships um either either within our company or with other startup companies and our uh, team of of professionals as you, you might i don't know if you heard about kelly and blair are talking i mean they are very 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 accomplished in compared to most of the most of the counselors out there and definitely our fees is extremely affordable compared to any other market competitor out there and our process of admission oh, sorry our process of payment is is on subscription basis which is which is not nobody is offering that um and um the subscription gives you uh, a level of confidence and comfort that that you can demand us the same quality of work throughout the subscription basis and you are engaged into our system and and you get 24 by 7 um, support from us and there is no limit on how many colleges you apply how many essays we write 
how many how many times we 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 review your resumes how many interviews we prepare for or how many scholarships we apply for there is no limit on anything the subscription covers everything and 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 the most important one which we are not ready yet which we just started our journey is is the technology part of it so uh, our you can download our app and you can you can you can get a lot of information directly from the app and we have a a a, a unique um, um, offering um, called as college corner in the app which is a collaborative discussion forum um, which is for all the high school and students and their parents and this is this is a, a a social networking kind of platform where all the discussions happen um, um, only around the college admission process right i mean you can you can like you can poke you can you can give thumbs up or thumbs down you can share your pictures and videos but it is exclusively around your college preparation your sat preparation um, or, or your college projects so there are there are many many other unique points which we are going to unveil in the in the next couple of years so um, we are we are one of the few startups i mean in the india edutech uh, industry right now uh, which are already angel funded um, um, and, and we are based in silicon valley and uh, we are on a on a great mission to make make uh, students and parents life easier through technology enablement thank you thank you so i think uh, so karan those are you were asking about the pricing uh, you mentioned it's a subscription based it's a subscription I, based and it depends upon when you join in so i don't want to give a number right now because it varies from yeah. from when you join so please talk to us please reach out to us yeah yeah so uh, i suggest everyone to reach out to them using the email and the phone number provided on the screen uh, please go ahead and contact them if you have more questions on the pricing and all so i think uh, we are almost covered so frigid Uh, maybe avika is asking for kids in high ability classes right now do they have an advantage for college applications absolutely yeah yeah i mean i mean if you are if your kid is high top achievers right i mean right if they are doing more more high end um, i mean courses definitely they do stand they do stand i mean um, and and their recommendation letters and the transcripts do speak about it and of course for those students who are, who are aiming for ivy leagues and top schools we have we have phenomenal program i mean we are making i mean a live projects with these students i mean i mean um, all the students from our our team from our group who went to like georgia techs and 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 university of toronto and mits and carnegie mellons and cornells they we made them do real time projects and we made them show real time results one of our students from last year actually started his own startup company and raised 100000 dollars in funding right so so i mean the top colleges look for top achievers and 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 top achievers need a platform like ours we 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 help the student in designing the project we help the student in developing the project and we help the student in in in, in executing the project and and also making a making a presentation to show uh, about his project to this to this respective colleges so for top achieving students for students who are aiming for ivy leagues we are we are ready made and, and we can show the results right from day one um and um so please talk to us about that and 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 we we will we, we can explain you more in detail um about uh, about top achieving students okay so let me combine the last three questions into one and make it the final question so the first part of the question is uh, they're asking whether you are supporting your service in all states or only in california and the second part is uh, two parts for the second part that is extra curricular activities recommended uh, uh, including sports like you no know, school sports or outside of school uh, classes like martial art or something like badminton etc are they recommended uh, the second part of the second part is uh, what are the extra curricular activities recommended for admission into undergraduate business schools okay let me take one by one we are yeah. all over the us this year we got more students from new jersey and north carolina than from the bay area right and of course we always we have students from on the texas area i mean since since our day of inception so we are offering right from seattle all the way to boston um, we are we are offering i mean from floor from from uh Uh, Minneapolis to to Florida, including Texas, we are offering all the states. There is, it's we are not a, a, a California bound company. Number one, number two, uh, coming to the extracurriculars for business students. I mean, the more the more uh, 
act, real time work i mean whether you work in dominos whether you work in mcdonalds or whether you work in um, indian grocery stores everything counts everything does but you have to show your business acumen you have to show the fire in the belly for you to make it work i mean even if you even if you start i mean 200 dollars or 300 dollars worth of investment into stock market and, and start start showing that 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 shows your interest so we have a list of extra curriculars that 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 are exclusively fine tuned for for business students we can we can talk through them if you reach out to us and there was a second question ramgar it slipped my mind yeah actually uh, they are asking about like you no know, uh, sports and badminton and martial ah, arts huh. are they, right. yeah are so, they as i said everything count as an extra curricular if you can write about it right and and i, I want to emphasize that i play tennis for 4 hours every sunday the entire year that doesn't mean anything okay i play tennis during the summer and this is what i gained from it this is what it means to me this is what i learned from it this is what this is what i am going to do for tennis moving forward it makes sense i'll give you one example there are two students who played basketball in our last year in our last year's um um uh, uh, team last year's group of students one student was very 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 good at it i mean he he got promoted from i think i don't remember the actual words i'm not into basketball that much um from a uh, forward team i mean he he became a forward player i mean by the end of the season so he is very 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 uh, um, high achieving students in the basketball but he just wrote i love basketball i'm inspired by kobe bryant and and, and i i played this that's it there is another student who who is like tinier than him and who couldn't get much chances and what he did was he 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 realized that he might not be able to contribute to the team on the ground on on the on the uh, uh floor but he actually joined their coaching team and he jo- and he started coaching of uh, the, the players and helping them towards their towards their preparation and practicing sessions and he wrote about it how passionate he is about the game and how he used his passion um in coaching the students so that, even though he didn't get a chance to play on the on the floor guess who got who got selected into the top college that's what matters your your passion your zeal your 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 emotion your connection your hook your commitment those things play into role not your numbers not your certificates of course without certificate you can prove you cannot prove that but don't just assume that i submit a certificate and i get admission into stanford no it doesn't happen like that that's great uh, thank you so much and i think with that we covered i think uh... Uh, someone is asking when the grow me was started uh, three years ago 2019 um, i mean we we got incorporated and we already placed 85 students last year and this year and you can you can go to our website you can check out testimonials if you want we can send you more testimonials um, if you want uh, or we can give you references of parents and students if you want to talk to them yeah i think uh, yeah so that's all we have uh, thank you so much and the session was uh, lasted for like 2 hours 15 minutes uh, it's a great uh, informative session uh, i would like to request if uh, uh, naga garu is there just to say a few words if he is there please uh, naga garu can you can you speak you can i know you are traveling or driving if you can uh yeah and yeah please and please go ahead uh, if you you can say a few words if you would like to yeah. that would be great yeah yeah thank you very much for uh, providing this opportunity to tana and also like i see you participants a uh, lot of participation at one point of time i see like uh, 220 people i hope uh, this is very useful or informative session and uh, once again thank you for the participants and the organizers uh, our uh, uh, president raja kaskutti and uh, sorry our president anjay chaudhary garu raja kaskutti garu and ram tata garu and who ever uh, helped this um, event to make uh, success once again thank you all thank you very much yeah so th- yeah thank you naga garu thank you gromi team uh, especially i think uh, upaji garu kelly garu and blair uh, and definitely i think we have uh, srinivas vorigandi garu who helped us with this program so thank you srinivas garu again i would like to thank uh, our president uh, anjay choudhury garu 
and I think we missed a few of the executive members who attended at some point and maybe later they left. So Satish Vemuri Garu, uh, Secretary Thana, and uh, I think Padma Bhagavali Garu, the regional uh, representative from uh, Seattle area, Portland area. And uh, also I saw, I think, Uma Katki Garu uh, attending it. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for all the executive committee members who joined us and also who supported us uh, to do this great program. Uh, thank you, Bromi. Thank you, all the attendees. And we'd like to share the recording yeah. later, but I think, uh, yeah, please stay tuned for Thank that. you so much. Thank you so much. I mean, Raja Yaru, I'm Sinas and Garu and uh, Ram Garu for your kind help. And and big thanks to um, Anjay Garu to, to, to make a point to address us. So uh, very, very, very uh, uh, encouraging and very supportive from day one. Um, we really, really thank the opportunity and look forward to talk to you more. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you, Pajigar. We'll keep in touch. Thank yeah. You. Bye. Thank you.